Hey guys, Core Ross and Rainbow Six News. Today we're diving into a Twitter thread on Rainbow Six Siege written by a developer of Rainbow Six Siege. And this is all about the creation of Deimos. And this developer who is called Justin. You may have actually seen him in the reveal for the new season and he is one of the developers who worked on Deimos and gives us actually a look inside about how they pick weapons for new operators, how it all works behind the scenes and some of the limitations that I did not know before reading this. There's a lot of really good information in here. So we'll start with generally an operator's designer decides the kit. Though our loadout balance and expert also has a lot of input. So it sounds like whoever's doing the actual design is kind of figuring out what kit they're going to have. And then someone else is there kind of helping with the idea of how it might balance out in the game. So we mainly focus on complementing the operator's gadget intended gameplay style and general aesthetics. Moving on from that, we see we use mid range guns as placeholders to start to find the loadout more firmly as we test and then lock in when the design is finalized and production begins. We avoid changing things during production, though we might give ourselves options that we narrow down later. Now, we're going to have to make a few guesses on what production means. My assumption would be that the operator has been designed at this point in maybe a 3D model and concept art and all that, but they're probably not playable in the game. And the production, I would imagine, might be that part where they start putting it into the game. But that's a bit of a guess, of course, on my part. And they say, we do have guidelines we try to follow. Three to four weapons options total, shared between primary and secondary. Ideally, we avoid three plus options for either type, though on some rare occasions it happens. Also, two secondary gadgets on launch maximum. We want to leave room for balancing later. Now, of course, these kind of rules have changed over the years. Earlier years of Siege, there was less rules, so we did get operators with more than these things. But of course, that has changed as things have gone on, and they've, of course, refined their process for making operators. And then we've got utility weapons like the Bailiff, secondary shotguns, or the Gun 6 should be used sparingly. We only add them when it would really be important to the operator's kit. And impact grenades or breaching charges wouldn't do the trick. Again, these can be a balancing tool. And he says, personally, I prefer using guns that are underrepresented when I can. I made an Excel table that tracks loadouts to help me with this. I also like to try using weapons used by the operator's nation of origin. However, these objectives come second to what's good for gameplay. We avoid making new guns frivolously because we already have many. We try to add new weapons when they would be meaningful, like as a signature weapon or as an important balance and lever for the operator. When that happens, the gun is designed right along with the operator. Interesting. And then for the next points, he's contextualizing some of what I said with Deimos. From the very start, we know Deimos would have the vendetta and we wanted it to be an important part of his kit. Most of our gadgets concept for him were linked to his gun somehow. Would be very interesting to know what their gadget concepts were. The core fantasy of the gadget we ultimately picked, the Death Mark, was a Wild West shootout. Kind of matches, of course, with Damus. And Damus was meant to have a cowboy vibe. So many gameplay choices were aligned based on that. Keywords include mastermind, intimidating, close range, aggressive, and lethal. We wanted the Vendetta to have a wow factor, which is where the damage and destruction came from, but testing shows it was way too weak compared to Defender's SMGs and compared to his own primaries. Multiple iterations resulted in adding the sight and minimal recoil. So the sight here is interesting because I was kind of like, oh, I wish I could have taken that sight off at points. And then the idea of the Vendetta would be a quick kill or be killed gun. You had massive potential if you get close enough to the enemy to use it, but you need to get close damage drop off and your margin of error was lower, six shots. And then we got the Vendetta's custom red dot is there both to improve the sight profile and iron sights were bad and to give us a balancing lever. We could maybe add zoom for technical reasons, sidearms can only have one sight option. So I had no idea this was a technical limitation. So the sidearms can only have one limitation. Now, I'm sure he's talking about pistols because of course you do have secondary SMGs that do have customizable sights. But yeah, 
I did not know there was a technical reason for that for pistols. So I chose the scope despite the lower inconsistencies because of course we've seen Damus use his gun and it never had a scope on it. Since the Vendetta was key to Damus's kit, we needed to give him primaries that wouldn't outshine it and make it feel like a downgrading during a death mark. During testing, we originally had an ARX and a 612 as placeholders, but those soon changed. And yeah, I would not have liked this guy with a 612. Now, ARX would have been okay, but we have a few operators with that already, of course. And then he says, I chose an AR and a shotgun for Damus, AR for versatility, shotty to double down on close range combat, also because cowboy aesthetics. I thought about a DMR2, but it felt redundant with the revolver, plus we didn't want him to be a long range fighter given his gadget. And then I originally wanted to give an all American loadout to Damus with an M4. So that M4 is present on Damus's actual character. If you look at him, he does have M4 magazines. So at some point, of course, in his past, there was probably the idea that he would have an M4 and that was part of his cosmetics when they were building them. But we determined it would be too strong. Same reason he didn't get most guns. We picked the AK-74M because it's mid, has a big mag to compensate for the Vendetta and is quintessentially a bad guy weapon. But of course, not very American weapon and not very good for a Western guy either. Hopefully the M4 will show up on someone else at some point in the future. So the Mosberg was a late substitute to Damus's kit. I wanted a more Western shotgun and it got suggested. I love that gun, mute main here. So I jumped on the chance to use it, even if it's used by a lot of operators. It wasn't added to a new one recently, so we were fine with it. And then DMS originally had smoke grenades. That would have been great for his character with his gadget. As a third gadget option, interesting. The plan was to test and remove the one people saw as the least appealing. So the feedback that smokes weren't interesting for him was pretty unanimous. So they got cut. Very interesting. I would have assumed it would actually be quite good, but obviously that is not the case. I thought people might use smokes on Damus to mask their approach while they use their DM ping to target. I've recorded an alt version of the reveal panel segment depending on what gadget got cut. Honestly, it was a little surprising on how universally the feedback was. Interesting. And then of course flashes were out of the question for Damus because it would be far too powerful. And if frags could still be cooked, no way he would have gotten them. It was fortunate timing with the nerf that allowed that option. And that's all for now. I see questions I'll try to answer, but it's 2 a.m. and tomorrow working day. So he does pop on here with one little thing, which is weapons have multiple balance and levers, but some are much harder to change than others. Recoil and damage are easy, but changing the rate of fire has many knock on effects audio for example so of course you would need to fix an audio for a faster firing or slower firing weapon so it makes it much harder and then thoughts on another one reusing a defender gun on attack and vice versa is risky and usually avoided what makes a gun fair on attack defense differs a dmr on defense is a recipe for spawn peaks for example it also makes it harder to tweak the gun since you affect both sides